One of the easiest jobs in the world is being a YouTuber, trust me. All you have to do is record videos, edit and upload the videos, and not be a predator. But sometimes, that last part is really hard for YouTubers. So, today we're going to watch YouTubers who were exposed as predators. We're going to see why they have an issue. There have been dozens of cases where YouTubers are exposed to be predators, but we're going to explore eight of the most infamous cases, starting with EDP-445. Before the notorious cupcake incident on the 18th of April 2021, EDP was a favorite creator amongst almost everyone, as he was one of the last YouTube creators with absolutely no filter, therefore tackling every topic regardless of the vulgarity. I was like, just staring. I we all know about the cupcake situation, and if you don't, you are in for a shock. I hope this goes into the cupcake. I was trying to hold in my ass cheeks. I was trying my best not to sh on myself. No doubt. I wish I could get paid for talking about holding my butt cheeks in. I wish I would get paid to talk about that. I'm not on that level yet. But EDP had some hilarious moments throughout his career, building a fan base that was always there to support him. However, this support from fans would soon be put to the test because EDP's career was about to take a controversial turn. In If you got paid for talking about your butt cheeks and got a lot of money for it and all you have to do to keep your tremendous fan base, all you have to do is not be a predator, it's not that hard. Don't talk to kids. In July 2020, rumors started to spread claiming that EDP was inappropriately messaging his underage fans. And while EDP addressed the situation claiming he was innocent, some people were unconvinced. One of these people was a YouTuber named Cold Raven, who uploaded a series of videos in an attempt to ex- Okay, so he's in the, the football sports algorithm EDP and this guy okay I see what's going on here suppose EDP still despite all the evidence cold Raven provided viewers quickly concluded that he was simply using EDP's name for clicks but cold Raven was still committed to exposing this is stupid logic if you provide evidence for something and people's argument is you're just using this for clicks that doesn't negate the logic that you said your reasoning for doing something has nothing to do with whether the thing you did or the thing that you're saying is true or false. Exposing EDP. The next time, one of Cold Raven's viewers set up a decoy account posing as a minor, which successfully baited EDP into messaging them. And by the end of 2020, EDP was caught eight times trying to meet up with underage people. Eight. Eight. Eight times? My dude. You're gonna get arrested for that. Eight times. Eight times. Seriously? People. This story would then take a massive turn on the 18th of April 2021 when EDP was on his way to pick up a cupcake. Oh, I was actually coming out here to pick up a cupcake and then go back home. <laughs> However, when EDP arrived, he was instead confronted by a group of people who were all part of a massive sting operation set up to expose him. The situation quickly oh, yeah. became one of the most talked about things on. I, I, I was just coming to get something to eat because I just wanted a cupcake. Let's be honest, this guy wouldn't get out of bed for anything less than seven cupcakes. Just being honest, bro. On the internet, and EDP slowly lost everything. His YouTube account was deleted, he was fired from his job, and struggled to find new ways to make a living. The story could have ended here. So he had a job job too. Oh man. Here, if it wasn't for prominent names like Jideon and Skeeter Jean, who- Oh <laughs> yeah, the man. Skeeter Jean right there. Who teamed up together to, once again, catch ADP 445 in the act. On September 3rd, 2023, Dion posted a 12-second clip on TikTok showcasing him and Skeeter Jean supposedly confronting ADP. Although the full video of the situation hasn't- <laughs> He's dressed like a cupcake. <laughs> Jideon, what are you doing, man? ...been posted yet, there have been clips surfacing online showing what appears to be EDP messaging another underage person. While the EDP situation was one of the most infamous in YouTube history, it wasn't the first time a well-known YouTuber turned out to be a pedophile. And they didn't go into the most important part there, so I'm going to provide additional context. He was also sending pictures of his poop to a lot of these decoys. He kept talking about his poop. And he kept messaging them pictures of his poop. So he was he's also a very strange dude. I mean, I don't think that's illegal to send pictures of your poop to a minor, but I mean, it's kind of weird, bro. Demetrius Madsen or Jikishi was on track to become one of the biggest Minecraft streamers of the past decade. Okay. But when he was exposed to be a pedophile, his career changed forever. After Why was that red bar going the wrong way? 
catching the attention of the biggest Minecraft content creator, Dream, for his quote, kind and loving personality, Jakishi was invited to become part of the most famous Minecraft. See, I'm scared now because he got the wide apart eyes like me, how we look like frogs. So he's given a bad rap to people with wide eyes. Minecraft server in the world, the Dream SMP. However, for fans of the Dream SMP, Jakishi's sudden disappearance may come as a surprise. The reason for his absence dates back to October 2021, just two days after his introduction to the Dream SMP, when disturbing allegations of grooming began surfacing on Twitter by a user named Vauxy. I feel like it's my responsibility to bring this to light in order to prevent this person from taking advantage of more young girls. With that being said, I'll start from the beginning. When I was 13, I met him through Minecraft YouTube. Through Skype, we quickly became close friends. We messaged often, talked like best friends. It's easy to trick a 13 year old. The dynamic shifted from nothing more than platonic friends to him being sexual. The earliest I have is when I was 14 in 2018 and he was 19, 18 or 19. Due to the recent event of him joining a considerably oh. large content creator group and gaining exponentially more exposure, I feel like it's my responsibility to bring this to light in order to prevent this person from taking advantage of more young girls. The person would then claim that both of them had begun talking when she was 14, while Jakishi was 18 or 19, and that things had already become sexual in his end during their earliest conversations. Oh, we got, we got, uh, pictures. So I should send it then? No, stop. I win. Valaxy would share screenshots of their Discord. Okay, I'll just go off myself that this is a typical st Skype conversation back in the day. The internet was more edgy in 2018. No, no, I'm kidding, but still, I was gonna cry, cry face. Oh my gosh, no. I wouldn't go out like that, shake my head. I just wanna call. Yeah, you haven't even sent nudes, nudes yet. You can't die. So like framing it like a joke. For chats, where she noticed that the- She called him a thought. I'm not a thought. Use a thought. Shut up before I send nudes. What the- what? Hi thoughty. KK sending nudes. Yes please. Get blocked from my snapchat. Because my boyfriend is logged. LOL. Okay so they're on snapchat too. The dynamic shifted from nothing more than platonic friends to him being sexual towards me and wanting sexual Ew. things from me. The two of them would eventually exchange explicit pictures with each other, with Jakisha Yuck. frequently talking about her body. We also discussed more about him coming to visit me in my own town. And in howdy, 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 howdy. Thank you for the follow. Howdy, howdy, howdy. How's it going? These conversations, his replies would get extremely sexual and pushy. I was coming from a place of eagerness to meet one of my best friends in person. He was not on the same page. She then alleges that not only is he talking inappropriately, to a 14 year old he's also jealous when she has her own friends surprise surprise the dude got problems if you can't pull anybody your own age and you're going after young kids who knew that you also are a jealous person is anybody anybody shocked at that in a hotel with a man who said he would try to not make sexual advances on me however jakishi would carry on him talking to me like this carried on until i was 16 even after i curved him multiple times and expressed my disinterest in him sexually I think the dude just don't got anyone. The dude just don't have any real friends. So he's talking to 14 year olds. I mean, her being 16 doesn't really fix the issue here because he was talking to her inappropriately before that. I and also, if you're talking to somebody for two years and nothing happened, maybe give it up, brother. Wanted to keep talking to him because I didn't want to lose one of my best friends. So I tried to ignore and disregard it when he made remarks towards me. That's disgusting. I can no longer ignore it as his audience of young and impressionable girls is growing by the second. This was the final straw for Vauxy, who concluded that she eventually blocked Jakishi and Snap. I mean, the FBI should have been involved at this point. Snapchat, Twitter, and Instagram several months before she posted this tweet longer and has not spoken to him since. The story could have ended here. And it should have. Why is the story not over? Why is the story not over yet? But things took another twist. As it turns out, Valxy wasn't the only one who had unsettling experiences with Jikishi. Because over the next 24 hours after the post by Valxy went live, more than 18 people stepped forward to detail their experiences with Jikishi. One victim who had come forward was Chaotic Jaden, Jikishi's video editor. In another tweet longer, she would say, This all started in October of 2016 when I was 13 years old and he was 17. Wait, hold on. So he had a video editor who was 13? I'm so confused, bro. We talked every day and eventually started dating back in December 2016. Long story short, we broke up in March 2017 and stopped talking for a while. However, what this wasn't what? the last time both of them were involved, as Chaotic Jaden would state that they would start talking again in 2018. I'm so confused. Why does he keep talking to minors? 
It's not hard not to do that. It's easy to not do that. It's so easy to not be a predator. It's, what, what is going on? Before revealing their relationship took a different turn. Our relationship turned from best friends to people really quickly. S is anybody surprised that happened again? He constantly asked me for simple favors, including nudes and videos. We exchanged pictures multiple times. At this time, I was 14 and he was 19. I broke up with him shortly after this, but he wanted to continue being quote, friends with benefits. Ew, brother, ew. Brother, ew. With me. He still wanted nudes for me and wanted to do things in Discord calls as well. Jakishi wasn't so quick to give up though. According to Jaden, she repeatedly told Jakishi that she wanted to end the relationship, but he would constantly beg her anyway. Beg? Okay. <laughs> Oh man, you got you gotta you gotta be a special kind of person. You're a predator who preys on younger kids. You can't get them because they keep rejecting you. You get jealous when they hang out with other people. It's just, I did, I can't understand. What this guy needs to do is subscribe to my YouTube channel and not be a predator. Those two things is what this guy needs to do. Arrest this guy. Arrest this man. He would stop for a week and then continue harassing me and begging me for nudes and other things again. In the following days after these two exposés were uploaded to Twitter, more than 40 new people came forward detailing their own experiences which were almost identical to the last ones. These claims would lead Dream to removing Jakishi from the Dream SMP because Jakishi actually went on to personally confirm the allegation. I love this Minecraft backdrop. I don't know. It puts me in a trance and it probably gives them longer watch time with Dream. Yukishi never issued an apology or even responded to this situation at all. His Twitch was permanently banned, his YouTube channel and TikTok page were deleted, and Yukishi Good. simply disappeared from the online world altogether. Yeah, but why wasn't he arrested is the question. Colleen Ballinger was another creator who was exposed. That's a picture. <laughs> I just got jump scared by that. That looks like a default profile picture for Facebook. That should be a Facebook picture for sure. Those who have groomed her underage fans. Why would you blur her face after showing it though? Colleen Ballinger became well known through her internet persona, Miranda Sings, a character that she introduced to YouTube in 2008. I don't Recognized know universally for her signature red trousers and thick lipstick, Miranda gained an audience of more than 10 million subscribers, establishing a very dedicated fan base. However, Nothing wrong with her getting fans as long as she's not a predator. However, little did anyone know, it would be elements from within this dedicated community that would later bring to light allegations of inappropriate behavior associated with her. These okay. allegations mainly centered around her interactions with Adam McIntyre, who was just 10 years old when Colleen would engage in inappropriate interactions with him. In a video released in June 2023, Adam would upload a video titled, My Relationship with Colleen Ballinger, in which he would go deep into how big of a fan he was before everything went south. Okay, I'm, I'm trying to follow along here. Because after meeting up in person for the second time in 2016, Colleen and Adam's relationship took a different path. What is happening? Not understanding what's going on here. Is he a minor wearing a dress with facial hair? Stubble? And the fact that they keep using this picture is hilarious. After sharing his negative experiences with Colleen, Adam would eventually expose Colleen for grooming him. You're being more inappropriate. And I just was like, this woman used me. This woman groomed me. The video immediately went viral, bringing hundreds of thousands of people in light of the situation. Colin came forward with a response to the grooming allegations, though it didn't work out the way she might have hoped. In a response that many found a bit odd, she chose to address the serious allegations by singing a song in which she claimed that cancel culture was simply trying to silence her and that the accusations were all lies. Why is this lady playing a musical instrument when someone said she's a groomer? ...trying to silence her and that the accusations were all lies. A lot of people are saying some things about me that aren't quite true. It doesn't matter if it's true though, just as long as it's entertaining. Many wouldn't even consider this video an apology, since Colleen never even apologized in the video. Yeah, that's not an apology video, that's you making a song, capitalizing on the exposure. As the internet dug deeper, however, they found many other instances of Colleen acting inappropriately with children, particularly during her live shows. For Okay, so there's stuff on camera. Or they're feeling the consensus that Colleen was a pedophile. In one show, Colleen was seen asking a young kid to reach into her pants as a part of a pretend dating skit, which unsurprisingly raised a lot of eyebrows. Yeah, you think? There were also times when she called girls onto the stage just to mock what they were wearing. As a result of this huge mess, Colleen decided to cancel her upcoming live shows and hasn't been seen on the platform in over two months. Does it even occur to you? to not have a child reach in your pants? What kind of crazy pills am I on for people to be this dumb? 
While many of the YouTubers on this list have been under the internet's radar for most of their careers, Feature Man was not, which would in part be the biggest reason as to why his crimes had remained buried for so long. Feature Man also- Okay, so this is some old dude. Old man Jenkins. Let's see what he did. Also known as Tom Willett, had a relatively small channel on YouTube where he posted song covers and vlogs. My man, 387,000 subscribers is not a relatively small channel. I'm sitting at 500. How are you making me feel right now? The only way I won't feel bad is if everybody watching subscribes right now so that I'm not considered a small channel. Brother, this is not a small channel. Until his channel exploded in popularity after he uploaded his video, Eating a oh. Watermelon with a Clone, which now has over 5.6 million views. Feature Man earned the reputation as a wholesome and down-to-earth person. However, after it was revealed that he was a pedophile... I need, a, I need to make a video eating a watermelon with a clone. That's a very basic effect you could do. His image changed drastically. In February 2023, users on Tom's fan subreddit unearthed a disturbing truth about his past. It was revealed that before his Hollywood career, he had faced three child molestation charges in Nevada. Still, due to inconsistencies in the sentencing- Old people are so weird! Stop it! laws at the time, he managed to avoid serving three consecutive life sentences. As news articles and legal records started to circulate, Tom discussed the conviction in a since-deleted YouTube video. So you're gonna make a YouTube video about avoiding a life sentence. I just don't think the risk reward is worth it. You gotta wonder what some people what goes through their head, man? In this video, he displayed a lack of remorse for his actions and actively avoided discussing the actual crime he committed. Thank you. About 1977, I uh, became involved with the court system once again. I would I'm not a handsome person by any means, but if I was this guy, I would consider trimming the eyebrows slightly. I was arrested. I was arrested, I was tried, I was convicted by a jury, and I was sentenced. And the sentence uh, was life in prison. Instead, Fisherman dove into legal intricacies and how he managed to evade the sentencing. He even concluded the video by advising people to stand their ground and credited his freedom to having some friends. Anyone who's in a situation where you are dealing with uh, law enforcement that is not proper, do stand your ground. I did not make any deals with any uh, police or district attorney or anyone. Everything happened because I happened to have some friends. And Following the release- Oh man, why would you make this video? Release of this video, many fans unsubscribed and felt betrayed. Speculations arose, with some suggesting Feature Man had bribed the judge or that undisclosed factors had allowed his freedom. Shortly after posting this video and receiving this amount of backlash, Feature Man would delete his video and many assumed that his channel had been abandoned. This would change when Feature Man began posting videos once again, as if nothing even happened. Um so you're just gonna casually drop that I should have been convicted for murder, but I knew the right people so I wasn't delete the video and then go back to making rote watermelon videos that's what you're gonna do old man many of his fans had unsubscribed and regularly leave comments under his videos calling him out for his past actions feature man would ignore these and carry on posting his videos as if nothing even changed unlike the previous youtubers who managed to avoid legal consequences mad thad 0890 did face a legal reaper uh oh we got an anime profile picture is this gonna be the first vtuber to be a pedo Cushions, but somehow found his way back onto YouTube. Mad Dad was notorious for his short YouTube vlogs featuring his rather unconventional girlfriend, an anime body pillow. One <sighs> Y'all people need to get outside more. So really, you guys are going to go on Amazon, buy an anime body pillow for a girlfriend. You have all that energy, but you don't have energy to hit subscribe on my video. Man. One of his most notable videos showcases framed photos, a mouse pad, and his anime body pillow. That stuff is so cringy to me, bro. I'm, I mean, as an adult, it's cringy. As a kid, I don't know, I'd be like, that's cool, I guess. But as an adult, that's so cringy, man. ...of the character Koda Noah as he celebrated her birth. Oh, it's all one. Wait, what? Celebrating her birthday? Day. Yet this wasn't the first time he posted this absurd content. In one particular video, Mad Dad shockingly admitted to having questionable preferences, including an attraction to highly explicit and controversial themes. What's that? All the people that make fantasies, work, yeah, fantasies and brother and sister scenes and that. That's a thing. Whatever. Six mangas. You know, I like that kind of. Sh you know, wish I had a little sister so I could have. Sex with. I got a brother. Okay, now it's weird. Now it's weird. Because it's not a fantasy. If you wish it would happen. 
SWAT's gonna get you. Mad Dad's vile online presence wasn't limited to YouTube. He also had a presence on Facebook. On this platform, he posted disturbing content about how to look for illegal content and how to encrypt them. And in 2013, the FBI seized all of Mad Dad's electronic devices after receiving an anonymous tip about his online activities. Although Mad Dad claimed that the posts related to explicit content were a prank, the FBI made a shocking discovery. Okay, let me guess. Underage videos are found on his computer. A folder on his hard drive containing more than 300 illegal photographs and movies labeled Don't Click. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that. <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing at that. You, you can't make it that obvious. That's the first thing they clicked on, dude. My guy, you gotta be better than that. Surprisingly, Mad Dad managed to avoid jail time and was instead granted bail, which came with strict conditions, including wearing an ankle monitor and a prohibition from using the internet until his jail period ended. Good. Just three days before his bail was set to end, Mad Dad made a crucial mistake by posting something incriminating on Twitter. This action further implicated him, and this time, the Hold FBI on. took a more severe stance. Wait, Mad Dad close. made a crucial mistake by posting something incriminating on I'm back. Missed my waifu. Stupid feds didn't even find my backup hard drive. Brother, you were so close. All you had to do was not post this on Twitter. You people in your weird Twitter posts, posting every damn thing that pops in your head. I get that's what Twitter's for. Hashtag you only live once, hashtag swag, hashtag waifu, hashtag anime. Oh my God. And all the people liking it have anime profile pictures, except one. Can I make a guess? The feds find the hard drive. Twitter. This action further implicated him, and this time, the FBI took a more severe stance. Mad Dad was compelled to accept another plea deal that would result in a prison sentence ranging from 5 to 20 years. You done goofed, bro. Additionally, he was required to delete all his online accounts and register as a sex offender for the remainder of his life. Court documents revealed that Mad Dad's sentencing was influenced by the disturbing discovery of over 600 illegal photographs involving quote sadistic or masochistic conduct. Mad Dad served his prison sentence until his release on October 9th, 2018. His parole conditions included restrictions such as not being allowed to own or purchase anything from shops selling explicit material after not allowed to buy dildos. After his release, submitting all on You know it's bad when the police say you're not allowed to buy dildos. You know your life is screwed. ...and account passwords to the US Department of Justice and using a single internet connected device. While it might seem like the story has a positive outcome with Mad Dad behind bars, there's a concerning twist. You see, Mad Dad was released in 2018 and he started posting on YouTube again. Perhaps Mad Dad's channel has shifted from anime centered content to a rant channel due to his parole conditions. Nowadays, Mad Dad discusses many topics, including internet culture, Pride Month, and video games. They don't want you. Nobody wants you. Yet the most troubling aspect of this story is despite his criminal history, Mad Dad can still post videos on YouTube, raising concerns about the platform's policies and Yeah, you'd think YouTube would ban him. How it addresses such issues. However, unlike YouTube should also ban anime profile pictures. Mad Thad, who somehow beat the justice system despite being convicted of heinous crimes, Austin Jones never got an easy way out. Austin Jones or Ostude Pro initially gained fame on YouTube for his rock song covers. With a seemingly innocent profile, it's least expected that Austin would be convicted of evil crimes. I kind of like the high energy sunglasses look, okay. On May 10, 2015, allegations surfaced in an article by Pop Fresh suggesting that Austin Jones had engaged in inappropriate conversations with his underage female fans. It was reported that Austin would send messages to his fans on his Facebook page asking about their ages, sparking concerns about his interactions with- Now you need an intro to the video at the beginning. Get super close and say these lines. Hey Austin, it's name. And this but is age years old and then make it clap for 30 seconds. Got it? Okay, so this is a real thing and you won't post this anywhere. Right, I delete them after I score them. Underage people. Austin Jones faced severe backlash after videos of him instructing his underage fans to twerk and manipulating them into sending explicit photos surfaced the internet. Okay, that, this has got, oh, I'm so sick of this stuff. You got energy. 
to tell underage people to twerk, but you don't have energy to subscribe to me. Man. Twerk move. <laughs> um, so this is what you do. You stand with your legs apart, you bend your legs, and then you arch your back, and you don't arch it. You do it faster, so it's like this. In response to these allegations, he released a- That's not how you twerk either. So he can't even twerk right. Surprised that the predator can't do anything right? Anyone shocked? Video titled, Setting the Record Straight, where he addressed his involvement in discussions about twerking videos. I used to ask fans for twerking videos. Yes, twerking the dance move. It's not something that I'm proud of. It's not something that I think is right. And I shouldn't have done it. Yeah, but he didn't mention the underage part. You asked underage fans for twerking videos, bro. Gross. However, the video received mixed reviews from fans, with some supporting him while others demanded further action against Austin, seeing that he merely tried to guilt trip people into thinking he was a victim. In the video, Austin revealed that reading hateful comments on social media platforms had a detrimental effect on his mental health, leading to severe depression. It really blew up online. And, uh, sent me down a path that uh, is pretty scary. He angrily denied all the allegations. They're just not true. Nothing ever went further than twerking video. Saying allegations aren't true when you admitted to the allegations means you're a liar too. There were never any nudes, never any physical contact. It okay. never happened. So you didn't do those crimes. So I just have to get that out there because nothing ever went further. And even when as far as sharing these apology videos never go well for the creators. In personal aspects of his life, some that were not even related to the original topic, such as the passing of his sister when he was six years old and his parents' divorce when he was young. I experienced death and loss at a very young age. Not an excuse. Don't even try. We've all experienced sad shit. Um, I had an older sister. She passed away when she was 10 years old. So everyone who had an older sister who died asks underage fans to twerk, stop. I was six years old at the time. So you barely remember it. Um, you know, losing a sibling for anybody is tragic. No sympathy. And going through it at such a young age uh, was very difficult for me. Comments were quick to call out his actions, pointing out how you- So 12 years later, you ask underage fans to twerk. Like, where's the logic? I'm trying to figure it out. I don't get it. He's merely trying to use a sad story to gain sympathy from his viewers. Don't use the death of your poor sister for sympathy points. What an insult to her memory and those that will forever mourn her. The thing that's right. crazy is that this guy thinks this is an apology video. It's just him giving excuses and telling his tragic backstory for 16 minutes. Like that is not an apology. A warrant for Austin Jones's arrest. It's not hard. L l let me show you guys. I messed up and I need to take full accountability. I'm sorry. It will never happen again. I'm a changed person. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. That's all you have to do for an apology. It's not hard. It was issued on June 9th, 2017, and he was subsequently arrested three days later at an airport in Chicago. Federal investigators discovered four pieces of evidence of Austin clearly grooming fans from 2016 to 2017. And since dozens of fans had already alleged Austin had groomed them, it's obvious that there were way more than four cases. During a phone search, the police discovered inappropriate text messages between Austin and his underage fans. So he lied when he said nothing else happened. Austin Jones was released three days after posting a $100,000 bond, but was placed under house arrest with restrictions that included a prohibition on using the internet. However, this state did not last for too long. On May 3rd, 2019, Austin Jones pleaded guilty to all the charges and was oh. sentenced to 10 years in federal prison with oh. He ain't gonna look so young when he comes out. Eight years monitoring his release, scheduled on December 31, 2027. In hindsight, it's hardly surprising that Zaza faced legal trouble related to sexual activity with a 13-year-old girl, given his history. Zaza when you got like the Bieber hair and you purposely make yourself as clean shaven as possible and you're purposely trying to be the guy who looks cool, but the version of cool that like an underage person would think is cool, you're a weird, I don't know. I just think it's weird. Zazaf was known for his nerdy and incel personality type on YouTube. He gained recognition for creating content that often involved approaching girls in public and asking them out. Can I have your phone number? I have a boyfriend, I'm sorry. Aw, oh, dang it. Zazaf started to- Shoot your shot and got rejected. Nothing wrong with that. 
his channel at the age of 12, primarily focusing on RuneScape content. However, he transitioned into making fake story time videos, like one where he pretended to ask a girl to be his valentine, which ended up with him simulating her with a knife. What? Even my cat thinks that's weird. Hi, I'm pretty sure you already noticed, but- Is he wearing a Pokemon hat? I don't have a valentine yet. I saw this girl, and I came up to her, and then I said, Hey, you wanna be my valentine? And then she was just laughing at me, and she laughed at me, and then, and she said, No. What? Come back here, please. And then she came back here, and then I got out my knife. And I in her boob. He continued to create these faces. <laughs> what a dumb... Like, I don't generally like using the term incel. Sometimes a glove fits. It just... If you're gonna be a caricature of it. Fake story time videos, but eventually shifted to approaching girls in public and documenting his interactions with them. Zazef's most popular video featured him finally being able to hug a girl, which garnered millions of views and substantially increased his subscriber count to over 60,000. Okay, so he's hype. Incel hugged a girl, cool. I can't believe what happened to me today. I got hugged by a girl. Nice. Good job, bro. And she is pr pretty hot. Nice. She was my cousin. As time passed. <laughs> uh, maybe he can't do better than his cousin. I don't know. Maybe, maybe he should be proud. <laughs> Zazaf created a new series on his channel, live streaming his encounters with girls in his local area. Although these live streams have since been removed by YouTube, they attracted the attention of local authorities. I mean, he's not obese. In a video titled I Got Swatted by Police, Let's go! Let's go! I was there. Posted in 2018, Zazaf revealed that law enforcement had visited his home to inquire about his live streaming activities. Uh, yesterday, I got swatted by the cops because of my live streams. They knocked on my door and they pretty much asked me what am I doing with my live streams and they told me I can't be sexually harassing girls and stuff. And they said that I can get arrested. In his video, he was quick to assert that he wasn't sexually harassing any girls during these interactions. I'm not so far, I actually agree with him. Asking a girl out is not harassing them. As long as you leave them alone when they say no. Sexually harassing any girls. Because I really not sexually harassing any girls. Following the visit from police, they would then go into- Because, like, sexually harassing someone is, like, a legal definition. Looked through Zazef's devices and questioned him about his search history. So they looked through all my- They looked through my computer, they looked through my phone, and they looked through my iPod Touch. Okay. You shouldn't have anything in there anyway. I mean, kind of an invasion of privacy, but that's what we do as SWAT. And they were asking me, what kind of porn do I watch? Based on the content he had been consuming, that's creepy. Assuming they alleged that he had a liking towards essay fantasies. And then they were like, um, do you, do you have any fantasies and stuff? So they were trying to like make me go to jail for like having. Do not talk to the police. Not complicated. Fantasies. I don't even have fantasies, okay? Despite the police's warning that he should no longer film those live streams, Zazev continued his activities for a time, and if anything, only strengthened his need to continue streaming. For a while, Zazev would continue streaming as usual, taking to the streets and talking to women, and posting a few videos as well. This is when, with seemingly no warning, Zazev would stop uploading. I wonder what happened. And on the 4th of May 2018, news broke that Zazev was arrested. In a 2018 CBS article, Man arrested after attempting to meet up with the minor. Oh, bro. You should have got with your cousin. Zazef would make a reappearance where it was reported that Roseville police say 22 year old Alexander Rudenko had arranged to meet up with what he believed was a 13 year old girl. He had who he believed, not what he believed been talking to on social media. However, when he arrived in Roseville for the meetup, he was confronted by law enforcement instead. Rudenko was then arrested and faced charges related to attempting to meet a minor, with a bail set at 200,000. And on May 9, 2019, Zazef received a sentence of 364 days in jail and was placed on a four-year probation period, requiring him to register as a sex offender. Zazef's story took another disturbing turn in 2022, when another CBS News article reported his arrest once again. According to the article, the Sacramento County Sheriff's Office says 26-year-old Alexander Rudenko was arrested on August 30 on five counts related to sex crimes. 
sex crimes. Detectives say that the arrest stems from an investigation into Radenko and two underage girls. Two? Why don't you just learn your lesson? At some point you gotta learn your lesson, right? Zazef was no- I just wonder how many of those underage girls were his cousins. ...to authorities for frequently arranging meetings with minors using a fake name and profile online. And while the exact circumstances of his most recent arrests were not disclosed, detectives say the two girls he allegedly assisted were 13 and 17 years old. Despite this latest encounter with police, Zazef was once again released on a $135,000 bail. How's this bro posting bail? and scheduled to appear in court in early October. While Zazef was a YouTuber who showed glaring signs of degenerate behavior, Plasma Master Don, a sweet old man singing song covers, would shock the internet with his horrible past. Pl I, I don't know if I'm ready for an old man predator. I don't know. You all ready for this? Plasma Master Don, a YouTuber in his early 70s, had gained popularity for creating videos where he sang covers of popular songs. Many viewers considered him their grandpa due to his wholesome and sweet online persona nice. as evident in the comment sections of his videos. However, this image was shattered in 2020 when a YouTuber named Nick Crowley uploaded a video to- Nick Crowley with 2 million subscribers, nice. His channel, raising concerns that Plasma Master Don might be a recently registered sex offender. Nick Crowley first came across this theory in a post on the r 2 Morbid Reality subreddit. This post contained links to two now deleted sex offender registry sites, both displaying an individual named Donzel Edward Owens, a 73 year old man from Ohio. Donzel was arrested on August 19, 2019, for sexual imposition when he was 71 years old. What does that mean? Just one month before his 72nd birthday. The victim in this case was an underage boy, and the allegations involve unwanted sexual contact. Oh no! The, the comedian in me was gonna immediately make a joke why don't you make unwanted genital contact with the subscribe button but i'm not no i'm just i gotta i gotta chill <laughs> The theory proposed in the subreddit suggested that Donzel Edwards Owens and Plasma Master Don might be the same person, primarily based on similarities in their appearances. Sunken in cheeks. And while Plasma Master Don claimed that he was not the same person in the offender registry site, further investigation. Sunken in cheeks, thick eyebrows, same color. Nation revealed some crucial details. For example, the site listed Donzel Edward Owens' birth date as September 10, 1947, okay. which matched the birthday listed by Plasma Master Don in the About Us section of his YouTube channel. Oh, you just happen to have the same birthday too, right? You just happen to have the same birthday. And look exactly the same. Notably, Donzel Edwards Owens drove a white 2005 Buick Century. Coincidentally, this- And you coincidentally have the same car. Same car seen in the possession of the owner of the Plasma Master Don channel, as showcased in the video titled, My Car 2005 Buick Century. Just four days after the r slash morbid reality post was published, Plasma Master Don announced that he would likely be stepping away from YouTube. He yeah. attributed this decision to his health issues, affecting his singing abilities, and he disclosed having COPD. A his health issues, he just- his body does this thing where it makes unwanted genital contact, right? Common lung disease causing restricted airflow and breathing problems. This video became Don's immediate follow-up after being exposed as a potential predator, fueling further speculation regarding his alleged sexual misconduct. Some individuals speculated that Don may have used these health concerns as an excuse to avoid addressing the allegations against him. Yeah. Asma Master Don's last video was uploaded on November 18, 2020, a mere eight days before Thanksgiving. To his viewers, this seemed like the ending to Plasma Master Don's story. And hopefully he never comes back. He was another predator who, like many on this list, was able to evade actually atoning for his behavior. That is, until December of 2020, only a month after posting his last video, that an article was posted. In the article, you can see that Plasma Master Don passed away at Salem Hospital after a prolonged illness at 73 years old. Okay, so then he died so he can never hurt somebody else ever again. Fans of his channel were left with a sour taste in their mouths. Not only for this predator who had built a seemingly innocent platform, but the fact that his channel still stands in touch to this day, with YouTube making no move to remove the channel. That was a damn good video by Ryan Pitchers. Oh, I'm subbed to this guy. Ryan Pitchers always coming in clutch, bro. It's not hard to just not be a predator. It's so easy to not do that. Instead of being a predator, all you have to do is watch one of these two videos or subscribe to this channel. Have a good day.